Hello from David and me and welcome to tonight's programme. First tonight, the father fighting to get his children back to the UK after they were taken to Zambia by their mother. Ken Spooner, who's from Newport Pagnell, has spent almost two years now trying to bring his two sons home and has obtained a high court order to do just that. Yet the Zambian authorities say they won't recognise the judgment. Then last week, he was arrested for plotting to abduct his sons and bring them home. Emma Baker reports. This is Ken Spooner in happier times, before his two children were abducted by their mother, before he began a long battle to bring them back home. Five-year-old Devlin and three-year-old Kaylin are now living with their mother Zanetta Nwandwa in Zambia, against their father's wishes and against an English court order. Now Ken's fighting to bring them back to the corner of Buckinghamshire they once called home. The couple lived here in Newport Pagnell and the surrounding area for four years before separating in early 2008. At that point, the children stayed with their father. The couple remained in contact and in October 2008, Zanetta took the children to Zambia for a holiday. While away, she called to say they weren't coming home. The following month, an English court ordered their return. In January 2009, Ken travelled to Zambia to enforce the order. Zanetta's lawyers tried unsuccessfully to have it set aside, so she then appealed to the country's Supreme Court. Two weeks ago, the court backed her case, agreeing the order wasn't valid. Then, in the latest twist, Ken was arrested last Friday by Zambian police for allegedly plotting to abduct his two sons and fly them back to England, a charge he vehemently denies. He's now launched a Facebook campaign to get his children back. The local paper in Milton Keynes has also taken up his cause. Ken has already spent tens of thousands of pounds in his fight for justice. But he says he won't stop until he gets his children home. Emma Baker, Anglia News, Newport Pagnell. Well, earlier I spoke to Ken Spooner, who's currently staying at a lodge in the Zambian capital of Lusaka. I began by asking him how the past few days have been for him. This last weekend's been an absolute nightmare um, for me, um, but I've managed to survive it. Um, and my spirit's not broken whatsoever. It's just making me all the more determined um, to, uh, to pursue my, the rights of my children. But this week, uh, Ken, since you have gone to Zambia, some serious allegations have been made about you as well, accusations that you were trying to abduct your children. What do you say to those allegations? Well, uh, obviously, they're, they're, they're totally false allegations um, designed to, uh, to have me run out of the country um, and uh, to deface me, um, to show me in a bad light. Um, it just shows the desperation uh, from the other side. This latest trip to Zambia, has it been worth it? Did you get to see your little boys? No, no, I've, uh, I've, I've not been um, permitted to have any contact with my children in the past um, seven or eight months. Um, I've been afforded uh, three or four phone calls um, and I've managed to, to see my children on a, just a couple of occasions where um, it, by coincidence, I happen to be in the same area as them, but it's only been just for a few seconds before they were scooted away by um, their, uh, their mother and, uh, and other members of their, their family. Ken, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there. We've run out of time, but um, we will no doubt be following your story. Thank you very much. Thank you. At least eight drivers have been struck by rocks and other objects hurled from a Bedfordshire motorway bridge in the past month. Now police are hoping that CCTV pictures can help catch those who are to blame. Now it's left some of the drivers with eye injuries and others badly shaken. It's only luck that the incidents haven't yet been more serious. Martin Stew reports. With a million cars a week travelling at 70 miles an hour, drivers on the M1 need to be alert. But now police are warning of a new hazard from above. This CCTV footage from Bedfordshire Police shows three boys slinging rocks onto the motorway from the footbridge near Luton Rugby Club. One smashed through the windscreen of a Royal Mail van, leaving the driver with glass in his eye. He was lucky not to crash. Well, it was from that bridge there that the boys threw the stones onto the carriageway of the M1. This is the eighth incident like this that Bedfordshire Police have investigated, and now they're asking for the public's help to find the three boys. 
We don't yet know if all of the incidents are down to this one group, but in any case, we do need to catch them. The consequences of causing a high-speed crash on the motorway are absolutely potentially devastating. Now, let's try and get a rough idea of just how scary it would be inside the car. Jay's going to drop a brick onto the windscreen, and we're going to get a view from inside the car as to just what it would be like when it smashes through the glass. OK, take it away, Jay. In slow motion, you can clearly see the fragments of glass spray across the seat where the driver would be sitting. People in Luton were universally scathing about the boy's actions. It's it'd been done in the past and people have been killed and you'd think they'd learn from that lesson, you know, but they don't do it. Especially when they're looking down and you wonder if they're going to chuck something down, so it can be a bit a little bit scary. You can just kill people by doing it. It's not a very nice thing to do and I think those who do do it should be punished. Earlier this month, an ambulance responding to a 999 call was one of several vehicles hit by bricks thrown from a motorway bridge between junctions 10 and 12 of the M1 in Bedfordshire. Three drivers so far have got glass in their eyes, and police want to stop the youths before anyone is more seriously hurt. Martin Stew, Anglia News, Luton. And Martin joins us now live from Luton. Martin, how seriously are the police taking this, and what exactly are they doing? Well, yes, David, understandably, they're taking it very seriously. You only had to look at the reconstruction in my package there to imagine just what damage that could have done if the driver of that car had been travelling at, say, 70 miles an hour along the M1. Um, there have been eight incidents, as I mentioned, in Bedfordshire alone, five of them from that one bridge by Luton Rugby Club. Uh, so what the police are doing now is going back over previous cases and just checking if any of them can be linked to these three lads. Uh, now, just as a little bit of a description for what they look like, the three are thought to be aged between 12 and 15, all wearing hoodies, uh, and one, as you saw there, had ginger hair. And I tell you, it's left everybody here in Luton pretty shaken because this could be a very serious accident waiting to happen. Thanks very much indeed. Two men are still being questioned tonight about the murder of a French chef in South End. Reynald Duchesne from South Woodham Ferrers died on Saturday night after an argument with a group of people following an open air concert in Priory Park. A 23-year-old man was arrested in Southend yesterday and a 21-year-old man this morning. Now, four fire